Hey guys, welcome back to Maxplain Dawn of War Unification. Today I have another faction guide for you, this time for the Imperial Guard, my favorite uh, vanilla faction of the nine. Is it nine? Five, four plus, yes, nine vanilla factions. So um, these are <laughs> no super soldiers, these are just more or less normal humans with some minor technical implants or whatever. So no super soldiers in power armor. Just your poor little guardsmen charging the line, standing the line. Um, so they are. Um, idea is that they have weak but many soldiers, so quantity over quality. Um, various um, leaders you can attach to your squad, so your infantry squads variants are very limited, but you can have a multitude of different leaders, commanders uh, attached to them, and they have really strong vehicles and tanks as well as buildings they can bunker down really well they have good turrets they have buildings where they can shoot out of and whatnot um, but as always you do not win a game by defending your base so at some point you want to move out but in this more details about this we will go later when we talk about build orders and stuff as usual we have I have a safe game where we jump into right now and here we are in the Imperial city map where we have the full roster of the <laughs> Imperial Guard in one swoop here again uh, but before we go ahead over to uh, the units and buildings we will as usual talk about requisition uh, the resources and unit caps the resources are more or less standard you get requisition and power from the usual sources like uh, strategic points, listening posts for requisition and power generators and thermoplasma generators for power. You also get the upgrades for the resources. What is special about the Imperial Guard is that you, um, your upgrades, the, your power upgrade for example is relatively cheap um, and some of the upgrades also give you more, uh, a bigger percentage boost to let's say uh, requisition and power income then for the usual faction so I think if I remember correctly both requisition upgrades give you more percentage requisition bonus than the, um, for standard factions your first power upgrade is cheaper but gives you like the usual 33 percent increase and your second power upgrade gives you a bigger percentage than your standard power upgrade so the idea is I think to allow for a defensive uh, playstyle where you maybe give up one or two points to the enemies like for example contested criticals but you get this back by get having better economy upgrades. This by itself is one reason why Imperial Guard late game is so good you just have so many resources to uh, play around with. For the units caps it's also special you do not, do not have the standard 10-0 for start you start off with 6 infantry or squad cap and 4 support cap vehicle cap uh, you cannot use this until tier 2, but you have 4 uh, from the get-go. The maximum is the standard 20-20, 20, 20, 20 uh, squad cap, 20 vehicle cap. Um, you increase this not by upgrades, but having buildings. Uh, your infantry building, um, where do you have it? Infantry command gives you plus 6. So you start off with 6, with uh, one infantry command you are at 12. Then you can build another one to get to 18, and if you want to uh, have the full 20 you will need to build a third infantry command. Your vehicle cap is also increased by having buildings on the field and this is then your mechanized command, your building for vehicles gives you also plus 6 so you start off with 4, you build a mechanized command you get plus 6, you are 10. If you want to build more vehicles you want to build more mechanized commands. But you can also build a new air command, it gives you also plus 6, please correct me if I'm wrong, I actually haven't checked it. Um, before gives you plus six then there is your mass pattern command which is your relic units you can build off also gives you plus six and last but not least your titan building the mass foundry gives you also plus four to vehicle cap so vehicle cap more or less is uh, being dealt by buildings so you can build a variety of buildings not spamming one but infantry is only increased by the infantry command mm. With these caps out of the way, we will start to talk about the buildings. But we go before we go through the buildings one by one. There's two special thingies. Um, first off is the tunnel. Um, do we have 
let me just build a worker here or, the, or a guardsman. These are your four buildings you have tunnel network in. Your uh, mechanized command, your infantry command, your field command and your listing post. You can chuck in um, units from everywhere and they can be transported over to this uh, point. It takes a little while and then if you double click it gets out and can fight on. Um, it is not just in the building like per se just being there. It also shoots out of the building. You have these little um, bunker lines here where it shoots out if there is um, depending on the amount of units inside the building. Listening post sports only one uh, squad uh, slot but all the others infantry command Feed command and mechanized command all have access to three slots of units inside and it shoots more stuff the more units are in. Uh, for one unit in it will shoot last guns, for two units in it will shoot last guns and plasma cannons, uh, plasma guns not cannons and if a third unit is inside it also begins to shoot um, heavy bolters. So it doesn't matter if it's like a squad, it can also be a builder or some sort of commander if all three slots are filled up it will shoot. So if you have some leftover units, even a squad with only one model, put it inside of the building it will fire with full uh, potency you could say. The second thing that is special about buildings is uh, add-ons. Your also <laughs> only these three buildings funnily enough have add-ons. You see it here, it's uh, for the command, uh, field command, it is add-ons for your um, various commanders you can have. You have access to some commanders uh, from the get-go but if you want to have psychos for example you need to get a psycho command then you have this little inquisition icon then you have the uh, for the priest you then have this icon here and last but not least for the vindicare assassin you get this sniper icon. There's a new uh, Venus temple edition which has no visual effect uh, sadly but this is uh, probably um, they didn't want to uh, change the model for the building. A little bit similar to how um, some of the add-ons for the Elder is not um, shown completely. For your infantry command there are only two add-ons, one your Kazakhan quarter quarters and your Okuin quarters. So we have like the fist, melee is Okuins and the skull is the Kazakhan. And for your mechanized command you have um, also four flags that will show up for the sentinel. You see it uh, on the side, Hellhound, Basilisk and Lehman Rust Depot. This is interesting in the sense that the enemy also can see what add-ons you have purchased by looking at the flags. So it's not something that is invisible. The opponent, if it scouts, you can see what add-ons you have purchased and then can see what you can build and more importantly what you cannot build yet. So if you see sentinels, he knows that you cannot build a basilisk yet. You will need to get the add-on first. And if it sees uh, the Lehman Russ here, it knows, oh, you're tier 4, because Lehman Russ are tier 4. Okay, these are the more or less general things. Let's talk about the buildings in general. We will start with the HQ. The HQ is um, pretty, much, uh, pretty much standard. You get your first two squads actually out for capping stuff. You get your tech priest engineer and later, which is your builder, and later various commanders. They have like secondaries commanders you can attach. Um, as well as singular commanders like the Windicar Assassin and the Venus Assassin. Uh, your infantry command is where you get most of your infantry, not all but most. And also your command squad which is your primary hero squad you will use. Then you have in tier 2 access to the mechanized command giving you all various uh, units for ground vehicles and you have your air command which gives you access to first in the tier 2 only one um, flyer and then in tier 3 you get access to three more. If you have the special uh, victory condition enabled, you get also these really cool and probably a bit overpowered Bourbonian guard. Big shout outs to Matthew the Frenchy who did the voice work and probably together with uh, Kekulis also the backstory. So this is a homebrew but really cool uh, unit. Really big backstory and stuff. Uh, I will uh, leave it to uh, Matthew if he watches this video to uh, explain a bit more. And also can... Uh, get an airstrike out. I hope I have this in the tech trees. Uh, I will see later. Then you have your mass pattern command where you get your bane plate or shadow sword, <coughs> your relic units, and then you have your mass foundry for your tier 1 and tier 2 titan. 
You also have one research building, is the tactical control, having all the different research for your infantry, for Kassikin, if you have the Kassikin coder, there's one upgrade for Ogrins, and one for your command squad, and one for your assassins, infiltration, and more command squads and whatnot. And a new one in uh, 6.9 is the master crafted bunker weapons. This increases the bunker, the damage of the bunker weapons I have explained to you before. One little side note about the bunker weapons. Um, it counts the units as soon as you click here. They don't need to be here, uh, like fully loaded in. As soon as this one is uh, shown, one weapon can fire. It doesn't uh, really need to be in the building per se. Mm. These are your production research buildings. And then you have, of course, um, uh, economy buildings. I haven't built a power generator, but they aren't really uh, special. They are a little bigger than standard. Plasma generators for other factions, but that's pretty much it. <coughs> Quite expensive, but also give you the standard plus 10 power. Uh, your listening posts here you see are more or less your standard listening posts. Can get a real beefy looking <laughs> once you upgraded them twice. And now we come to the defensive structures. Sorry, I need to drink a little tea every now and then so my voice does not die. <coughs> Still have a little cough here. Mr. Nurgle is still around me. You have your standard uh, minefield and you have your heavy bolter turret, which funnily enough looks really tanky, but has less health than uh, bolter turret from Space Marines, I think. Um, but yeah, really a good turret and it can upgrade, as you see here, to four different variants uh, in tier two. You have Punisher. This is this one. This is basically a Gatling gun, anti-infantry, Vanquisher, which are two outer cannons, so against, against uh, big infantry, um, so heavy infantry and uh, light vehicles. Then you have this beauty here, the twin with two plasma cannons. So big, really good damage for uh, against infantry blobs. So one of the better turrets in my mind, these two. And then you have your missile launcher turret, which is uh, also f this, the same as from vanilla. Very ha has the longer longest range, I think, from all the turrets. Uh, interestingly enough, this has two radius maybe this is a mistake we'll we'll see it later so the the they have just a little higher uh range than your normal um turrets and this has a really high range so this is really good for long range uh, anti-vehicle support other than that i would prefer the uh, rank wisher for basically anti everything which is a direct upgrade you could think of or the plasma cannon turret <coughs> the gatling thingy mm. I find the least useful because uh, in tier 2 you want to upgrade the turret to be something more than just anti-infantry. But if you're fighting, let's say, um, Space Wolves, ah, sorry, 13th Company or Turnits, this could be uh, really good. And lastly, we have this beauty here. This was for the longest time a survival only unit, an Earthshaker platform. For the longest time, I say it was added in 6.9, but uh, I played the beta, so I had access to it a little bit before. This can be enabled to be used in skirmish by the uh, artillery availability or whatever it's called um, victory condition, which I have now always on. So I can build a freaking earth shaker platform. This is tier three, limited to one per HQ. Range, as you would suggest, really, really high. Um, yeah, if you put it on the right space, you can attack basically the enemy HQ with it. Really, really nice to have. Really expensive though, right? Yeah. You can basically get uh, Lehman Russ for the same cost, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's more expensive than Lehman Russ, but you get it uh, up a little earlier. Okay, this should be about the buildings. One last thing about buildings is your HQ can scan once you have the uh, tactical control, which is really nice because um, your ability to scout is limited as you will most likely give up map control in the early game and at tier one at least and yeah other than your command squad moving around and scouting you would only have the uh, access to the long range scanner which is really nice because it does not only just scan give vision of an array it also detects infiltrators so you have this on-demand scan basically like your terrans from uh from starcraft the the aoe is a little lower than in um starcraft but yeah i always keep my uh hq 
uh, numbered just because uh, like in a control tube just because of this ability you want to have it uh, on demand basically okay this is the buildings now we will talk about the units and we start off with the builder and then the commanders we have the tech priest ngs here i always i just learned by watching mr landjark's cast that it is called an ngs ng engine seer and not an engineer <laughs> but okay makes sense it's a it's a tech priest he prays to the machine god and whatnot um really good builder unit has a good building speed you can only have three of them build time is really low the uh movement speed isn't the the, the greatest but you can see it has commander armor so it can be used in combat more or less if you have a squad that is uh does good range damage but is pathetic in melee you can tie it up with a tech priest and she's engine seer for example, in the matchup against Eldar, the fire dragons need to go at relatively close to a building to attack and do good damage in ranged, but are absolutely trash in melee. Uh, attack priest will not kill them, but it will tie them up forever. So use the attack priest in these kind of situations. Repair rate is also really good, I think, more than the standard. But yeah, limited to three and also expensive with about 100, right? No, 75, okay, not as expensive, but okay. Now we'll jump over to the commanders. You have all the commander units here. First and foremost, you have the command squad here. The command squad is your general here, your whatever it's called, <laughs> uh, general stubs, whatever. <laughs> uh, he is a pretty potent in melee and range, has really good melee damage, but his range damage is also pretty good. Uh, accuracy, not the greatest, but still. Um, and then you have access to three uh, leaders, commanders, which can join him out of the get-go. And there's one, the priest, we will talk about the priest soon, sooner or later, is really good because it buffs the speed damage and whatnot. So uh, the priest is the first thing you want to get always. And then you will decide if you add a psycho or a commissar. And if you want to have more squads able, you need to do research where you can get two additional ones. I can have here five because it is the campaign stops uh, where you get also access to your Kazakhan bodyguard if you have all the war gear purchased. Look at this fellow here. He looks really awesome. Um, has a really good uh, last gun and also power sword. So he is a pretty good companion. Um, other than that, the units give them their abilities they would normally give uh, to a squad um, except that the commissar will not give you HP regeneration. It will only give you a bonus morale and then being a pretty good combatant. Um, yeah, the Psycho gives your abilities and whatnot. But we will talk about these uh, leaders once we will talk about them here. And then you can just make a note, okay, the Command Squad gives, uh, gets access to these abilities as well. One ability that, that is exclusive to the Command Squad is the Strafing one, which is a, a poor man's orbital bombardment, um, which you get access to in Tier 3. Uh, all these uh, rockets that coming in dealing damage on them uh, every uh, rocket here deals damage uh, i'm not sure if it's like random but um yeah it uh, is it a pattern not sure but yeah does some pretty good damage against infantry and also semi good damage against uh lighter buildings okay now to the other commanders the commander is your get-go command limited to three and he is really awesome what does he provide your um, units. He does give you bonus morale in the squad, which is really nice uh, for your low morale guardsmen and especially conscripts. And he also provides you plus three health, re health regeneration in the squad, which is absolutely bonkers. And in tier two, you get the big old executability where you um, can shoot one fellow in the head and uh, will give your squads around. Uh, morale damage immunity for a certain amount of time and they will shoot their last guns and only their last guns no heavy weapons faster so it's a dps increase uh, and, and not a small one yeah the execute is um, for obvious reasons not available in the command squad <laughs> your other uh, tier one commander you have access to is the psycho the psycho uh, starts off with one ability the soul strip soul which is a single target ability which you can use against uh, infantry commanders and demons don't underestimate the damage against demons really good actually 
It also detects, so it's a tier one detector. And in tier two, it gets the lightning arc, which does a damage and morale damage to a squad, a whole squad. And the curse of the machine spirit is basically a stun for vehicles. In tier one, you have also access to the field medic, which is uh, basically an apothecary. Um, his aura and the buff for one squad, like if you detach the commissar to one squad, and his health regeneration aura should stack, if I am not mistaken. So you can have quite a HP regeneration on your squads. Given that your models do not have the greatest HP pool, you may or may not need this HP regeneration. Like HP regeneration is good on singular high health models because they will probably survive an engagement and then can heal back up. If you have a lot of low health models as uh, Imperial Guard has, health regeneration isn't as important because you will probably just reinforce your units because they will get one shot by a lot of stuff. So don't get over uh, confident by having a field medic around is um, what I'm going to say. And the standard barrier here is a really cool unit. It was previously only available in tier 2 but now is available in tier 1. It gives an aura around which gives morale uh, regeneration increase and whatnot. So it's a, a big old morale boost and it's good that it's available in tier 1 now because in tier 2 uh, if you had uh, listened to me the Commissar gives you morale damage immunity for a certain amount of time and dam bonus damage. So this guy becomes obsolete in tier 2 really quickly. Speaking of tier 2, your tier 2 commander is the priest. You can also have up to three of these fellows around. These, This is hands down the best secondary commander I, you can think of. You can attach it to a squad and what do you think it gives? Bonus HP, bonus morale, maybe bonus movement speed or bonus damage. I tell you what, everything. It gives you a 33% bonus movement speed. It gives you 50%. I remember, I repeat, 50% DPS increase, ranged and melee. It also gives you plus 125 HP per model and plus 50 uh, morale for the squad. So this guy is absolutely bonkers. This is the, th this is the sole reason why uh, uh, tier 3 infantry for Imperial Guard is so strong. It's the priest. Uh, you need to attach him and it's only 3. But oh my god, is he strong. In tier 3 you get access to fanat fanaticism, which makes a squad immune to damage. And it's not like they cannot die and survive upon HP. Completely damage and moral damage immunity for quite some time. You can have multiple um, priests, for example, in a command squad and chain this ability for continued invulnerability. So this guy, I tell you, if you are in tier 2, get this. You can even send him alone, like the big old uh, Evisorator or whatever this, uh, this weapon is called, is also really good to be used uh, for harassment against listening posts and whatnot. So this guy, always build him in tier 2. He is really, really useful in more than one way. In tier 3, you get access to two um, assassins. The first one, the vanilla one, is the Vindica assassin. This is the sniper guy here. Does not start infiltrated, but you can get a research that infiltrates him. Has good range. And I think uh, the f um, uh, engagement range here is also the range of his vision. So he gives you really good vision, especially if you have so like artillery units around, he can spot for you. And then you have this Ability here is assassination scope, which increases the doubles the range and damage of the assassin's weaponry. So we look, it is now this. If you click on it, it is this. Holy shit. Just, he can now fire half over half the map basically. So uh, it, it only is, how long does it last? Um, now it's over. So it's basically more or less third of the time you can have this activated so keep in mind that you activate this more uh, uh, often enough really good uh, sniper in that sense a new Skull assassin is the edit assassin in 6.9 is the venus assassin a more or less melee uh, if you look at the damage numbers but her um, actual use is utility she can also infiltrate but has three really nice abilities. The first is packet stuffering, which lets you uh, take control over a building. 
yes, that sounds really amazing and it is amazing. Uh, but you cannot, let's say, produce out of the building. But, <coughs> sorry, if it, you take over an enemy turret, it will now fire for you. If you take over an enemy listening post, it will fire for you. Not really sure if you also get requisition for the enemy listening post, but yeah. She is uh, really nuts when it comes to this. And then we have also have network map. You can click this on a enemy building, which is, I think, it uh, stuns that. Also, this is, this is basically also a stun for the enemy building, but you take control. And this gives you uh, the sight uh, range of all enemy buildings for a certain amount of time. These two share a cooldown for obvious reasons, but really nice uh, if you want to know where every building of the enemy is. Why not give you some uh, <laughs> intel, basically. Then we have feedback loop. Um, gives This is an AOE stun of buildings around. Is that right? Logic confusion will cause overheating and damage to structures. Okay, it's basically a structure damage. It does not state about stunning, but this is an AOE. If you click it, um, she will uh, feedback loop and deal damage over time to enemy buildings. And then you have these two skull probes, the guardian skull and the skull probe. The guardian skull is one that has a bolter, which uh, basically gives you some fire support. I think this one also has a little bolt gun in the mouth, maybe, maybe not. But this gives you the sabotage ability, which basically is a stun for vehicles and buildings. Uh, target building, actually. It only states building, but if it's the same sabotage as um, skull probes have, it's also against vehicles. So she is a good uh, tool against buildings, as you have noticed here. Okay, with all these commanders out of the way, we will now jump over to... The infantry. The infantry, as I said, isn't as um, <coughs> versatile, or at least it was not. Um, in vanilla, you only had your guardsmen in tier 1, which is your go-to infantry. Uh, the models, and um, the maximum amount of models increases as you tier up. Uh, so again, and in the end, you get like 50 models plus one a sergeant, and then can attach a commander to it. You have in tier 1 access to grenade launchers, and in tier 2, you can have access to plasma gun, long less sniper rifles and heavy stubbers and those two are really nice a heavy stubbers gives you a minus oppression so a slow to the enemy and long less as you would imagine is a sniper rifle so really good damage against infantry if you have like uh, units that come in closer you may or may not want to add the plasma guns which do also really good damage um, yeah so your go to infantry squad your second go-to infantry squad are these Reporting poor fellows here, these conscripts. They are not very trained well. They are in, are in stats um, all behind the guardsmen. Look at they have the same health and have five, uh, four models more. They also get a sergeant which increases the health of their units, similar to uh, how the sergeant of the guardsman does it. A uh, very low uh, morale bar. They have even lower morale if the sergeant is not present. So they are plentiful. Um, have less damage but are very cheap look only 15 to um, reinforce instead of 20 so yeah they are also cheaper to produce so if you for example want to tech fast don't want to spend too much resources in tier 1 you can get conscripts instead of guardsmen but they will fall off as you see they can only get flamers and which guardsmen especially not well trained want to get a flamer and want to get relatively close the flamer does lose value even more if you think about how scattered these guys stand around. If like this center model gets the flamer, um, it can only shoot until here. So basically when the enemy is already there to engage in melee. So the flamers are only used or best used if you um, have low models. So in general, I'm not a big fan of this flamer possibility here. Try to avoid it for the most part, if you ask me. Gets your tier one. Uh, availabilities in tier 2 you get access to your special weapon squad also a new unit in 6.9 these guys have melter guns so are good against vehicles and buildings and they have this special leader this guardsman spotter specialist um, this spotter increases the uh, firing range this is not the firing range of the melters but the melters also get a um, range increase if I read it correctly uh, carries a mod blah, 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 greatly benefits Greatly bolts reserve morale, which detection equipment increases the range within the squad can spot enemies. Okay, so it's only spot, not range, but he has a kind of sniper. 
or at least a long ranged uh, unit uh, weapon and these guys still have their medium range so you need to micro it a bit if you have the leader um, and they also carry frag grenades right from the get go and these are really strong boom really big knockback on those so uh, you can have those um, on the field and have a lot of frag grenades limited to three you see a limited amount of models but they get more health per model <coughs> especially from the upgrades in tier 2 you get also access to your heavy weapons team here these guys can entrench uh, they start off like packed up with only one guy the other guy is in the backpack for whatever reason and you can then entrench them and they start fire the heavy bolter before they only have a little last gun you can have access to uh, three different weapons you can start off with the ex um, availability of a last cannon or a mortar which is this one the mortar will not fire automatically you need to aim it manually which is the biggest downside on this one. This is other than that a really good anti-infantry weapon. Last cannon, um, really good anti-vehicle, really bad against buildings, contrary to other last cannons. And in tier three, you get access to your auto cannon, which is, as we know, your anti-everything and a big old plasma cannon if you want to double down on AOE anti-infantry. This is your tier two units. In tier three, you get access to two high-end uh, squads, the Kazakin. Kazakin are basically uh, guardsmen on steroids. And look at the sergeant. Hey, oh, he looks evil. Is this hair? No, this is his, is this his hair. Ooh, no, this is his comb. <laughs> Sorry. So these have hell guns, or uh, what are they called? Also, hell guns or hot shot last guns, I think. So they fire really big volleys of damage. They have a fragmentation grenade as well. Damage isn't the greatest, but the AOE knockback is really great. They can affix this to grenade launchers or plasma guns. Keep in mind that the plasma guns by themselves deal less damage than the hell guns. If you get the upgrade, uh, what is it called? A weapon specialization, the damage will increase for all special weapons, increasing the plasma guns, so they will then deal more damage than hell guns, but have a little less range. For the most part, I would suggest that you keep them on the standard weaponry and yeah, let them fire away. They are really fast, especially, can I quickly do it? Uh, genetic enhancement is something you would normally not go for, but if you have enough resources, you can go for and then they are really fast. Look at them sprinting around. And now imagine having a priest attached to them, they will get just run like a marathon man. Limited to one, so you will always want to have them and you will always want to have a priest attached to them for obvious reasons. The other tier 3 unit are your Okrins. The Okrins is your first and only melee infantry you have around. They are really good in melee, can get even like these uh, upgraded power uh, bayonets. So they are really good in melee with their ripper guns. They can even get a bonehead leader which gives them even more melee. Uh, prowess and you of course also want to have a priest on them <coughs> for the damage but also for the movement speed so they can actually engage in range and in tier 3 the fanaticism will keep them uh, alive longer so they are really good uh, for what they do mm. and then also you see one here that's uh, one of the latest um, additions to the IG roster is this missile launcher heavy weapons team limited to two only one model really fragile but as you might imagine, has really long range, so like it's a mortar or artillery uh, unit, has good anti-vehicle damage, but can load frag missiles for a certain amount of time. Then they would deal for as long as it lasts anti-infantry damage, but it costs you because you need to order it or whatever. Ammunition is limited, it says. And I told you about the special Bobonian guard. If you have the victory condition enabled, these guys look just awesome. Look at them. And have these <laughs> real world uh, weapons here. But um, I think the, the idea or what um, I heard was saying that uh, Games Workshop was uh, saying every real weapon you have in the real world can also be used in the 40k. So we have these guys with the really good voiceover. I will let them speak a bit. And there you can hear Matthew the Frenchy. They have like four different grenades. They have a frag grenade, they have smoke grenade, they have melter bombs. Smoke grenades is basically the ones that your rhino would normally... Oh, what? Receive damage 
Defense against racing also have a flash bang effect which disorientates and stuns. Receive a defense. Want a smoke grenade? Receive a defense against ranged attacks. This doesn't make sense. And you have this flash bang thing that lasts forever. What the heck? Sorry guys. So this is maybe something uh, with the unlimited add-on. The flash bang grenade. If is it really lasts that long, it's really overpowered. But is it a very special squad you which is actually or is explicitly stated not to use in pvp because it's not balanced for pvp i myself always have it activated in pvp um and you can have also some really cool uh, um, weapons you can missile launchers and that's on your, your not your standard firing missile launchers they have a little arc on it and they can also get long last so they are really good at range damage stat wise they are really uh, solid as well Oof. These are all your infantry units and now we will jump over to all the vehicle units and there are also quite a lot of. Here we have the more or less standard vehicles. We also have of course then the relic units but we will start off with the standard vehicles. In tier 2 your first vehicle you have access to is the Chimera which is a transport unit. It has a multi laser on top which sponsors some anti-infantry but also some mild anti-vehicle damage and has these sponsors uh, on each side which will fire if units are inside. Also has a little heavy bolt at the front I didn't notice before. And in tier 3 it can be upgraded to a Chimerix upgrade which gives you a quad linked auto cannon which just sounds as good as it is and one which gives you a conqueror cannon. So the conqueror is ba -ba -ba -ba, long range AOE weapon cannot target aircraft so it's more it turns to a real tank by that sense. Your other tier 2 options you have is your Hellhound, which is a anti-building, anti-infantry unit, has a little AOE on the attack, can also get some various upgrades. It can either get a Devil Dog, so it will exchange its, um, what is it called, Inferno Cannon to a Melter, or a Bane Wolf, which can replace the first weapon with a Chem Cannon for anti-infantry AOE damage over time stuff, but it can also Add a heavy stub on the top, which I really like because it doubles down an anti-infantry and gives you some suppression as well, maybe? Yeah, causes minor suppression. So you slow the enemy a bit down and then fire them with fire and AoE, which is just too good. And also has this heavy boulder, which you can exchange with this one to a multi-melder. So double down on the anti-building uh, part of it. I, am for the most part, like this heavy stubber because I just like heavy stubbers. Here we have the Conqueror, you see it looks really... Uh, <laughs> chunky here and yeah here the heavy stubble helps you quite a bit the other tier 2 unit you have access to is the sentinel the sentinel is a walker unit really fast but fragile it, it don't uh, look at the hp it's um armor class vehicle light all the other ones are vehicle medium so this guy will get down really fast really uh, fast on his foot also have ex has um, also a multi laser similar to this of the camera with a little more anti building damage than the camera has can get auto cannons and multi melters in tier one and then later a less cannon really expensive one in tier two doubling down on the anti vehicle and anti building damage and we see the heavy stuff on the top other tier two units you have access to are three of the four artillery units you have access to your basilisk is the one you probably know of has a little heavy bolt on the front has really long range is anti infantry for the most part and Disruption can get into two the Earth Strike around, which does a really good damage in an AOE, but costs you quite a lot. New or yeah, new in 5.9 was the Medusa, which is a shorter range, high impact variant, has a heavy stubber on top as well, as well as what is this on the front? Twin linked. Uh, does it say it here? It also has some anti-infantry uh, weaponry at attached to it. These share a uh, cool, um, cool down, a limit of three. And then you have also this new really cool Griffin, which is a medium range artillery uh, anti-infantry. Also states vehicles, but I'm not sure about that. But the biggest part of it is this smoke shell. This is a special smoke shell that it states that units inside will get infiltrated received even uh, bonus yes and they get infiltrated by this smoke grenade which is really nice if you ask me we'll talk later about this uh, special thingy here 
That's your tier 2. In tier 3 you do, you do not get access to new land vehicles. In tier 4 however you get access to your... Yeah, your... How should I say? What uh, Imperial Guard is known for, the Lehman Rust Battle Tank. It has like three different heavy bolters and a Conqueror Cannon, like a Battle Cannon on top for some uh, re relatively long-ranged uh, support. You can get various upgrades, I will talk later. And one special thing here is the Destroyer Tank Counter, which has really long range and is really good against vehicles and buildings. Can exchange for a Demolisher Cannon and put a heavy stopper on top, or is the right answer but this guy is, is limited to one and only and additionally to tier 4 also need a relic and a critical location i think demon ross is limited to two and now we will talk quickly about all the different variation vari variations you have 10 different variations here um, um i'm not really convinced that i know which they are which their role is really you have these Demon Rust Battle Tank, which is the first one, the Annihilator is, I think, these are auto cannons, right? I, I will drink a little bit to get my uh, voice back. Training Glass Cannons, holy shit, so this is your anti-vehicle doubling down. And you have your Conqueror here, this is your add more... <laughs> Adds more heavy bolters, anti-infantry, I would suppose. Then you have your demolisher with the demolisher cannon, which gives you very good uh, building damage. Yes. Then you have this is your eradicator, anti-infantry damage. So he has more. What is this? Is this a flamer? I'm not really sure. Sorry. And then have your this is your executioner, anti-infantry because he has a lot of different plasma guns, uh, infantry blobs. This is the twin linked auto cannons. This is the exterminator. So auto cannons on top. Then you have your what is it called? Huntsman. Basically all the flamers you can think of. Flamers at each side and flamers on the top. Then you have um, your Punisher. This is the guy with all the machine guns, like three heavy bolters, a machine gun, annihilator weapon, and a heavy stop on the top. And last but not least, the uh, Vanquisher, which gives you this Vanquisher cannon and a spotter guy on top, which can spot, so you have a longer um, vision range. And look at the range of it, it's really long. And this one is the incinerator, which gives you a, what is it called again? A, come on, a work tight weapon. So this is really good against big units like titans and whatnot so these two have really long range which would probably your go to units in survival for example in a, a real match you can really decide what you are facing if you're like for against turnets i would probably go for this if you're against uh, other um, infantry heavy factions you want maybe to go for um, this one with the training auto cannons or just one of these long range support units before we now jump over to the relic and titan units, we will quickly uh, talk over the aerial units. And there are four aerial units. First is your Vulture Valkyrie Assault Carry. This is the one you get in tier 2. Um, can fly around, limited to 2. Can land to load in troops. Can then um, load in troops and go up again, go anywhere else, land and uh, get them out. A bit, uh, a little bit, um, how should I say, not easy to use. Um, if a unit is inside and this one dies, the unit is death with them and uh, uh, dies with them. The damage itself, it only states uh, anti infantry and aircraft and it's only anti infantry. It does not do any damage against buildings, for example. So a singular turret that does anti vehicle will deal with this assault carrier really good. In tier 2 you get access to your Walter gunship and your Vendetta heavy gunship. These are your anti... Um, how should I say? Anti everything more or less. Um, this one has uh, more guns but is slower. This one is faster, right? Yeah, so this one is a slow big uh, unit and this is your little faster unit for, for example, if you want to follow a fast unit and want to take it down. And we all know and love the Marauder Bomber, which has some anti-infantry uh, units, uh, stuff inside. These are twinning glass cannons. I'm not sure if it had, has learned to fire them down as all the other vanilla units, 
but it is mostly used for their three bombing runs. It gets an incendiary bombs for anti-infantry, crack bombs for buildings, and then it also can smoke bombs, which is basically like a, a smoke grenade you can think of. Okay, now we will talk about the relic and titan units. The relic units you have access to is your Bane Blade. We all know and love the Bane Blade. The Bane Blade is basically how much weapons can you fit on one vehicles and the answer is yes. You have this big cannon here, you have the demolisher cannon at the side, you have uh, three sets of twin link heavy bolters and two less cannons. Holy shit, you can exchange the uh, big cannon to a hell hammer cannon for, I don't know, long ranged AOE weapons with big, big knockback and excellent on the move accuracy instead of this one here. There's also a side weapon here which I don't really know what it is but yeah you have now this more uh, shorter barrel and then you have the shadow sword. The shadow sword I think is a little more expensive than your paint plate. Oh no it's uh, the same price never never mind me. It's basically a paint plate variant you see the, the base weapons are similar but has a heavy stopper on the top no weapon at the front but this big uh, thingy here which can be exchanged to a quake cannon or a Vulcan mega bolters for whatever um, this is probably anti-infantry and this is against all types of buildings and structures so a quake cannon is um, if you want to uh, siege down an enemy fortification for example your titans are really titans is a knight imperial knight hero actually a uh, man uh, it has missile launchers on the top and a uh, chainsword, is it chainsword or what is it called? Reaper chainsword and this looks like auto cannons or whatever. It has like really uh, big weaponry and can exchange its left or right arm. So you can get a fully melee if you exchange this one to a chainsword and then you can also... Uh, okay, these change the right arm as well and this change the left arm. So you can double down on range if you for example get this Avenger Gatling cannon. So you have like two ranged weapons. Uh, if you take one of the others, it replaces the, your uh, already existing existing uh, ranged unit uh, weapon. So now you have two. Poof. Your tier two titan is this Dominus Pattern Knight. Basically, take this one and strap more guns on it and make it a little bit bigger. You have this one. Look at these weapons all around can um, change its right arm which is melee this time for <coughs> a big flame or a big plasma cannon or a big lightning whatever this means maybe a armor target basically a last cannon I think big last cannons also has a little missile thingy on top yeah so like million guns you'll see it here also this has a million guns so these guys are good in melee and ranged uh, good to have them on the field oof my voice is at the verge of death, but we will continue because because there are some mm, campaign exclusive units, uh, two campaign exclusive units, and of course the honor gods are sometimes also a bit uh, special. So we will jump over in a campaign replay where I can show you the special units in the campaign slash some of them are also in survival. So see you in a second. And here on the campaign replay where we I have put down an assortment of honor guard and campaign exclusive weapons uh, weapons uh, units we maybe start with the campaign exclusive weapons uh, this is the te testudo apc which is basically an exchange for your camera it has i think a little less hp same weapon options but it's a little faster because it has wheels instead of tracks i think it's called in english and the other one is your doom hammer a, a special bane blade variant you can have access to additional to your already um uh, shared limit one uh, bane plates and whatnot so you ha can have up to two bane plates on the field because uh, Kawa is like the bane plate production facility of the Imperium or whatnot this is the idea behind it this Doomhammer has this uh, very this magma cannon devastating long-ranged heat weapon that can decimate titans and armored targets so it, an anti-titan but can also get this Tremor cannon uh, the Doomhammer permanently modifies as a bane hammer and all its sense purpose, a huge cannon fires self propelling rockets designed to burrow into the ground before exploding. Um, slightly shorter range of fire than magma cannon, but much greater ROA. 
it, it changes the cannon here and also changes the picture, I think. Other than that, you have your standard two less cannons and heavy boulders at the side, but also a heavy stop on the top. We will look quickly how this one looks when it has this uh, tremor cannon. Yeah, so it also changes the picture, which is nice. Um, yeah, and these are your honor guards that are special. You have more than this, but I uh, only talk about the uh, ones that are special. Special are your commanders because they have all the abilities in T1, including the execute, which is really nice. And your infantry are special in the sense that they have special weapon possibilities. For example, the veteran classic can also get access to flamers and melter guns, which they would normally do not have access to. And I'm not sure why I have the bo bonus here. They are not special in any way. But the regiment guard are special because they are a mixed squad of um, women and men and have special weapons. They do not get the heavy stubber or long less, but they get melter guns and flamers, which is nice. And the description is funny. Guardsmen who serve as channel stubs bodyguards and then there are women inside. Hmm, stubs, you little devil. And then we have two squads which have a little oversight here. The, the regimental heavies, for example, do not have access to the new weapon options of the heavy weapon squads, like the mortar and the plasma cannon. So it's, I think it's an oversight similar to the Hellhound, which got uh, introduced in the extended campaign add-on, does not have access to the special weapons. So this is, I think, just an oversight and will be patched at some point. Okay. Finally, finally, we have all the different units out of the way, out of the way, and we can now jump over to the tech trees where I will tell you about the upgrades and when the Imperial Guard is the strongest or what are their timings, for example. See you over there. And here we are on the tech tree document. Um, I, I don't want to talk about every little thing that is here, but one thing uh, in particular that might uh, first on the first uh, view might look a little, how should I say, uh, crazy is that I have put lines like for this add-on for the uh, Psycon and put it in tier zero. It basically means if once you have the add-on, you do not need the um, tactical control anymore to get these, which is true for the most part. Like the add-on in general gives you access to the units, no matter what the uh, uh, requirements for the add-ons itself were, was, um, were, there are two um, exceptions. Ah, we forgot to talk of one. Uh, for, talk about of one unit. We will talk about it now, real quickly. Um, it's special is the Lehman Rust. The Lehman Rust still uh, needs tier three, and we forgot to talk about this Death Strike unit here. This is really nice. This is um, also requires like tier five. It's uh, <laughs> like a Titan tier unit. It's a big old artillery piece which uh, fires subatomic weapons, which gives you a big old AOE long range AOE damage with a staying radiation effect for um, damage over time. So this one is the wet dream of all survival players here. <laughs> so its its uh, requirements are that uh, high, so you will probably never see it in a skirmish game, but in, in survival this is like super awesome to have. Um, let's talk about the upgrades or yeah, the, the research you can get. Um, your all your different uh, honor, um, walkie upgrades I haven't talked about. You can get here like your standard uh, melee and range weaponries, but these pauldrons and this press blade, which gives you more HP and damage resistance. Your bionics also HP. This one gives you a true sight and uh, basically detection and uh, range damage. And yeah, and uh, this big old cape here, Ibrahim's whatever, gives you access to the Kazakhan bodyguards. And this one here increases morale regeneration or whatnot. So this is also really, oops, really good uh, honor guard if you have, um, honor guard, war gear if you have enabled it, uh, that is. Your upgrades are more health for your guardsmen, more morale for your guardsmen, but this one is really cheap and fast and gives you also a little health increase to your guardsmen. So do not underestimate this. And yeah, I always thought it's, yeah, it's just morale, whoever, I do not want it. If you are, have a little less resources and you still want to buff up your guardsmen a bit, get this one. Really nice to have. This one is the one that gives you bonus HP to your um, command squad commanders and as well enables you to get two additional commanders in your command squad. 
In tier 2 you get access to these optics here, gives you uh, increased range and damage and range damage and is the required to get the special weapon specialization which increases the amount of heavy weapons you can get and also increases the damage of heavy weapons by quite a bit. I think it doubles the damage or whatever of heavy weapons are so really strong. And then you have this one, this is similar to this one, gives you more morale but also some uh, minor HP buff to your units. In tier 3 you get this infiltration research which infiltrates your um, assassins. This one which increases your garrison uh, weaponry. And then you have these upgrades for your Kazakin, bonus movement speed, bonus health and bonus melee damage for your Okrins. These are the upgrades and now we will talk about timings. When is Imperial Guard strong? They are not as good in tier 1 because you have not a dedicated Kepo unit. I mean conscripts are nice, they are relatively cheap but um, yeah, basically this solves the problem a bit, but you can all, only have like three squads if you don't have the infantry command. Um, yeah, but these are all very slow, not the best in capping, you could say. So we will start a little slower in the game. Um, so tier one can be a little difficult. That's why Imperial Guard normally takes uh, or uses turrets to either defend a position, so your units can move elsewhere to cap, or even put an offensive toad down to um, take some points from the enemy. In tier 1 your command squad is your bread and butter. Because you want to have your command squad like always and then put the priest and later a psycho for the most part on it. So this is your uh, melee interception unit as well. Um, and also you can focus down enemy workers and uh, capper units so it's really versatile in that. You can either use it, as I say here, for defensive purpose, like defend your base, defend your ranged units, but also harass the enemy and scout. Don't underestimate scouting. In tier 2, the Imperial Guard gets really online. You get access to a lot of your upgrades for your infantry. You also get access to um, some more infantry options in the heavy weapon team and your special weapon team. But for the most part, you get access to vehicles, hellhounds, sentinels, uh, artillery, uh, cameras, Valkyries, you name it, all available in tier 2. So you can have a really strong tier 2. If the game goes longer and you enter tier 3, you either want to uh, double down on the air presence with these really good air ships or what I do like <coughs> most actually is get the special infantry units out like the Kazakin and Okrins. Or even if you have um, Enable the victory condition, you can also get the Bobonian Guard here. Um, and get priests for it. In tier 2 you should also, as I said before, get the priest temple out and get all the priests. This is the wrong icon. I will change that. Sorry about it, I will change this. This will have the right icon. Um, yeah, and gives you the priests. So priests, as I said before, are really strong. The game skills even longer if you're like I don't want the infantry or the vehicles uh, that uh, sorry the uh, flyers you can go to tier four which is a valid option for Imperial Guard Imperial Guard tier four is really strong and then you can uh, roll out your Lehman Russ your destroyer what's it called yeah the destroyer and of course then later on your bane blades and whatnot um, which is really strong of course. So for the most part, I would say tier two is really strong. Tier three has really strong flyers and infantry. You also have access to the uh, artillery support unit here in infantry in tier three. And tier four is mainly good because you have a really strong relic unit in the blade blade and a Lehman Rust with all the versatility it brings with the 10 different weapon options apart from its base. So it's basically 11 uh, loadouts you can have um, really good. Uh, quickly swoop over the units here. Um, I have put all the units and abilities here when it gets enabled. Uh, for heavy weapons you need in tactical control for the most part. Um, yeah, what else can I talk about? Yeah, even the weapons for the um, units also require tactical control. So if you're for example rushing tier 2, when I, which I will show you later, you can um, opt to get a tactical control instead of a infantry command although it's more expensive and needs more power 
you then have the access to some heavy uh, weapons, where uh, some weapon options for your vehicles you're probably rushing to. Yeah, that's about it. The honor guard units and bonus units. Um, there's only one I didn't show you or two. These are two commanders you can get in survival. It's like Toth and what is this guy called? Brom. These are like from campaign or something. So these some fan favorites. The Toth is basically a librarian. It has smite, it has weak and resolve and it has orbital bombardment. So really good, but only survival uh, reinforcement. Tier 4 is rival reinforcement, so only on uh, harder and insane. And this guy is basically a uh, sergeant, you could say. So you can both put them to your infantry squads. Um, yeah, that's basically it for the tech trees. I will change this little thingy over here and the um, HQ, and then you will have the right symbol on your tech trees once you watch this guide. And the second to last part is always build orders. So we will jump over to them now. And here we are in the build order document. The first builder as the usual is the quote unquote standard build order. order. Um, what makes this one here pretty standard for Imperial Guard is that it allows you to have some units on field to fight, to defend yourself, but um, don't not overcommit in tier one. So you can get a decently timed tier two where you uh, actually want to be, you want to be in tier two and f on. So the idea is to get an infantry command as soon as possible to get your um, command squad out. You also want to get either a guardsman or conscript, depending on uh, what your plan is later on. If you want to get upgraded infantry in tier two, you want to get for guardsmen. If you want to get for quick vehicles, which and do not use infantry for anything else than capping, you might as well get uh, conscripts. Nevertheless, you want to get a commissar out and uh, put them to one squad, which helps you to have like one fighting squad uh, alongside your command squad. And one is probably busy capping the whole time. You also want to st start off with a generator and the tech priest who have built the uh, infantry command will be used to um, put down a turret in a defensive or offensive position. Then you want to upgrade some listening posts um, because you want some increased income and they um, help you defend as well. So you probably want to get two plasma generators. If you do not upgrade as much listening posts, you can get also away with one generator. But remember your tier two upgrade costs you 175 power, which is more than for, let's say, for example, your space marines, which only pay 125. So you want to have a lot of power anyway and if you're in tier two then you want to have power for vehicles anyway so yeah i think three generators before clicking tier two is the norm correct me if i'm wrong of course the second build order i have here is a heavy tier one build order which can work against special uh and against some factions it basically means you want to get uh, more or less a standard opener here you want to delay maybe your um commissar here and then get a, but get an earlier tactical control so you can then add grenade launchers which are really strong and also your sergeants <coughs> and you want also to add the third third guardsman squad maybe even if, if a fourth if you feel like it um, your command squad gets the usual loadout your tactical control will be used to get some upgrades and you can add a, a multitude of leaders in tier one if you want to stay long in tier one and want morale bonuses for all squads around you might as well get a, a banner bearer and if you have them all at one spot and want some health regeneration <coughs> also medic so then in the end you have one leader for every uh, squad but you can also get like three commissars and which would be also also really good yeah generators and then tier two pretty standard um, then you have a tier two rush option as usual this is really <coughs> sorry really um greedy and can be punished really easily by an aggressive player because you have no much nothing basically to defend yourself you only have two conscripts and that's it uh, i would prefer out of the two options you have here this part you can also get just infantry command and then click tier two right afterwards or you can get a tactical control and the second uh, generator this as i said gives you the option to have upgraded vehicles like up vehicles with uh, special weapon upgrades 
in tier two, which is really nice. For example, if you do this, the standard, the more or less standard uh, unit you will rush to are, is either Chimera Spam or Hellhounds. So if you get some Hellhounds out, you can then add heavy suburbs on it if you have the tactical control, which as I said, is a really cool combination. The other opener I have here for you is a tactical control opener, which is basically what it states. You open a tactical control after your plasma generator to get some upgrades. And this allows you to have, uh, here's something missing, I will add it, uh, three guardsmen with grenade launchers and commissar right off the get. You will not have access to your command squad, however. So this is the big downside on this one. Um, but can you give you a decently timed tier two? This is very defensive without getting a turret, you could say. Then I have one here. This is a more or less a meme build. Command Squad Madness, basically you get only conscripts and then add a tactical control right away to get an upgrade for your Command Squad. Um, this one you can uh, purchase right away, but these uh, two additional ones which get enabled by this upgrade will can only be added later. Uh, you see here you do not have any infantry to fight. Really, it's basically only your Command Squad doing the heavy lifting here. Uh, can be fun if you have like hero war gear enabled and you're hitting tier two and get all the different war gear for your command squad. So can be fun. Is it optimal? Probably not. And the last one, which is also not, which I'm also not sure if it's <coughs> viable, is a conscript spam. This is kind of similar thinking to what I told you in the Chaos Marine Guide, where you have this cultist opener, where you just uh, open cultists and reinforce them quite a lot. This is similar here. The first two conscripts you have here will be sent over to the enemy to annoy them. A uh, prime map for this is, for example, Shrine of Exelion, where you sh send one conscript of each side of the enemy and try to uh, intercept cappers, <coughs> decap and whatnot. These will not fight well if they meet resistance, so use them only uh, on fights you can easily win and retreat. These two uh, second conscripts will be then uh, used to cap your base. So you have a delayed capping, so it, you can also delay your second builder. Uh, what I like in this build is that you skip plasma generator to get all the units out here. So you have enough power for one commissar later on and you have power for one heavy bolted turret. So where you meet the least resistance out of the two squads, you can then double down that with a offensive turret, which is really nice. So later on you want, of course, add some plasma generators, add some more leaders to your conscripts. If you are like really heavily um, reliant on this tier one pressure, get the tactical control for your upgrades, prioritize the morale upgrade because these guys have poor morale and then uh, head tier two at some point. You can also like cut the later part here and only use this as a, let's say distraction <coughs> to uh, just cripple the enemy then to get a decently timed tier 2 after it and then have a death push in tier 2 with chimeras and hellhounds or whatnot. So really uh, I'm up to you basically. Okay, with this build orders out of the way we will jump to the last part of the guide which is a replay. This is a replay uh, of a game I have played. I tried to find games of um, other better players than me but as um, like in the time of the recording, the update to 6.9.25, uh, 9.25, yeah, um, just happened a week before. There are no real uh, Imperial Guard let's, uh, replays I want to show of the, let's say, top five of the ladder. So I just played one game myself. So we'll jump into this right now. And here we are on the replay where I play against Peachy Bands. Harlequins with my Imperial Guard. He will stick to my view. Um, just a little background. Peachy Band is more or less known for his Harlequins. Um, this is the second game in a row I played against him. The first game he did uh, a tactic he likes, uh, likes a lot. It seems is the tier 2 rush into Death Jesters, which I was able to defeat. So I was expecting something different here. I chose this replay over the other one because it shows a little more of the new stuff you can do. Um, my game plan here is to get an offensive turret around here. This has two uh, things it does. The first thing, it um, secures the squid location. It uh, screws with um, Pitchy Band's possibility to get this relic. And if he wants to go through and want to annoy me and one, my relic, he needs to really 
uh, go really close to this edge and all the negative cover so I have quite a good defensive position here. And if he wants to attack me otherwise he really needs to go all around the map here. So really long walking distance. So this is a prime position for an offensive heavy uh, bolter turret which is still a little off to the enemy base so it's um, not like in the face of the enemy. This is why I chose this. The opener I did was a guardsman and yeah two guardsman opener because I wasn't uh, sure if I maybe need to uh, go for a heavy tier one or not or make it a little standard game for now I have um, the infantry command the plasma generator and starting up building listening posts having an offensive Harry bolter delays your building of your own listening posts because uh, the tech tree has a bigger walking time this command squad has the um, or should I say the, uh, the order? Let's put it like that. To cancel like pylons, did he cancel? Will he cancel it, or will I be able to kill it? If I won't be able to kill it, which I it seems it do, does quite a lot of economy damage. And now he stands here and meets my heavy boulder turret. So this is exactly what I wanted. Uh, this guardsman here. I think I park here. To um, ah, okay, I, I start to attack the critical location. I do not want to fight these Harlequin tropes in melee. <coughs> Sorry, for obvious reasons, especially with the great Harlequin as support. So I now use my command squad to harass the other point of Mr. Peachy Band. All the way, I'm pretty confident in my base. Um, yeah, as I said, he needs to would need to walk all the way around. So this is a, probably a map which is uh, Imperial God favored. I haven't played it a lot, but if if I see it now. Um, in this replay it's, it really looks Imperial Guard favored. The mimes moving out this uh, point was not built up yet so I was um, parking here a bit so maybe waiting for a builder or not. Now that I see that it is built up I will want to uh, quickly kill it. It actually get cancelled this time so I need to run away probably lose a bit. I do not want to fight in melee here. I, I stick here in the melee for a bit more by accident and the Psycho does a really good AOE attack. Which actually enables me to run away now. At this point, have uh, my um, relic, and now, as I said, we'll park these guardsmen here, <coughs> get some more models to firing out, and then use a, as well the soul strip, and then move away. Did not even lose a model here, which is the big part. And yeah, if the enemy wants to att attack me, he needs to go to the um, no, nah, negative cover or he needs to move around here which actually he could do. He could move over here put his um, Harlequin leader here but yeah I also have my tech priest nearby so I don't know how uh, effective this would be. Getting some economy upgrades, getting my third plasma generator as I usually go. I do not get a commissar out here which um, I actually forgot. It was not a conscious decision. I actually f just forgot about it. But yeah, I can take to tier two right now. Bam, and you see me, I'm on the mark because I'm not really busy for the most part. Busy capping here. And then I'm, as I said, he needs to go through here. And then I have this point here, I have my command squad who can, <coughs> sorry, backstab him a bit, so really a uh, bad position. And just, I thought he would take these points here because I have no real um, way to uh, hold on my own so he at least could get the critical location victory condition ticking but he does not so this would be something you want to do in this situation as a uh, harlequin or let's say any faction that is uh, pressured like this you want to get the points outside now I'm just a little scouting running around see if I can uh, scout something kill a listen a, a listening post for example so I'm just trying my luck here, seeing if I can do some damage and the damage of the command squad against buildings in melee is really high but then I see that he's coming and we're like yeah I'm out of here I'm doing like half damage here and that's fine by me I'm now moving away if I will attack this another time I will deal have um, dealt already some damage to it which is nice the damage on the command squad will regenerate over time having like all the economy on the world getting like a fourth generator getting all the listening posts. So what will I do in tier two? 
I'm getting uh, another infantry command here. This is more or less a little too late in the sense I wanted to have it to have a more an expanded defensive line so I can put in units here and have the uh, bunker weapons. But other than that, I will go for. Come on, Max. I was a little undecided. If you are having like a better plan, burn, a game plan than I have, it would have probably yeah, a special weapon squads. And I will use the um, tunnel network to create effect because it's quite a walk over here. So I'm just um, getting the units inside the tunnel and tunnel them over here. Getting another special weapon squad here, and I should. I'm a little uh, late on that. Should get um, the priests. I forget about the priests uh, for way too long. So my mistake. Getting my uh, tech priest back here and getting uh, tactical control as I'm wanting to play infantry i want to have a tactical control and it's late if you want to play infantry you will normally want to add a tactical control on your way to tier 2 and start some upgrades already so this is not played very uh, uh very good i also add uh, air command for some air support later on other than that i have my um specialists here which i want to have the leader for but leader needs a tactical control so as you see this is not not the best <coughs> sorry executed um strategy here but it still shows you how good these um specialists sin especially uh, their grenades one and boom big aoe and knockback really nice their yeah, morale is broken they have the confetti around but yeah my command squad is here Command squad also has like in tier 2 more weapon options. I get a vanquisher here, which can yeah help a bit if they come um, back in. But yeah, the Harlequins here, the tropes are dead. And I'll get my specialist leader, which has this uh, uh, kind of long range last gun, last gun. And this spotter here, I move into range for now. Do I, yes, now I finally remember about the uh, priests. They actually move fast enough that I'm not bothering with the micro, like putting them inside some stuff. My one guardsman squad uh, kept this point on the top because it was undefended. Now you can see the um, melter guns on working. Okay, they actually fight now the... Uh, yeah, and they should fight this one. I see a DJ, Death Chester, Death Chester using their explosive stuff, but I have the armor upgrade already done which is nice the one harlequin is fighting into melee but getting shot down quite a bit have my um command squad now uh, forcing melee on these uh death jesters more death jesters coming in so i'm getting out of here i killed the strategic point i now have the hard counter to death jesters which is anti-infantry vehicles they do not do any damage to vehicles and they are infantry, so anti-infantry vehicles are the hard counter to death chesters. If you are ever facing a harlequin that likes to call death chesters, play defensively. In the first game, I um, he rushed death chesters, and my strategy was to uh, uh, scout it out with the command squad. And once I saw death chesters, I first tried to um, focus them down with my command squad, and later on just retreat in the safety of my listening post because death chesters do not do any damage against buildings so i can just camp down wait until i hit tier 2 myself and get like chimeras and hellhounds out and then hard counter the death chesters this is how you can deal with them um this was also the same i said in the one replay i cast of um pg band versus yasuo where yasuo was playing orcs like any vehicle is the hard counter to the death chesters. The death chesters are really good against infantry. They have a good passive ability. They have like the shuriken toss of what they have. So this is really, uh, really double down the anti infantry they can do. But yeah, a vehicle is the weak part of them. And here you can see that I have the priests attached to um, most of the specialist squads. So they packing a punch and look real nice. Yeah, um, with some little trash talk in the end uh, I will end this guide um, as usual if I have something wrong if I have missed something if you know more than I do please put it in the comments I will gladly pin the comment if it's um, 
adding some valuable information. Yeah, but other than that, I say the usual. Thanks for watching, guys, and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.